One of the skills you're going to need to use in applying complex numbers is to be able to find their conjugates and then use those conjugates to find the moduli and quotient of the complex number. This is going to lead us to a number of applications. So let's take a look at complex numbers, their conjugates, and how we divide them and what that tells us about the complex number. So if a complex number, you'll recall, is in the form of a plus bi, where a is the real part, and b, i, is the imaginary part. So if we have a complex number in that form, a plus bi, its conjugate is a number that has the same real part, but the opposite imaginary part. In other words, if the, if the imaginary part of the original number is positive, then the imaginary part of the conjugate will be negative, or vice versa. For example, if we have the number 3 plus 4i, where 3 is the real part and 4i is the imaginary part, its conjugate will also have a real part of 3, but its imaginary part will be minus 4i. So the conjugate of 3 plus 4i is 3 minus 4i. They are conjugates. And an interesting thing happens when we multiply a complex number by its conjugate. So let's take the form of a plus bi and multiply it by its conjugate, a minus bi. And this is very similar to multiplying a binomial times a binomial where it's in the form of a plus b times a minus b. If you'll recall, the middle terms of that cancel out and that's true also in the complex number system. a plus bi times a minus bi is equal to a squared when we distribute this out a times a is a squared, minus abi plus abi, and then we have a minus b squared times i squared. And we know that those middle terms are going to cancel out, leaving us with a squared minus b squared i squared. And if you'll recall from imaginary numbers, the definition of i squared is negative 1 because the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. So if i squared is equal to negative 1, which becomes a squared plus b squared. So if we multiply a complex number by its conjugate, what happens is we wind up squaring the real part and adding it to the imaginary coefficient. And we wind up with just a real number in the form of a squared plus b squared. So let's take that and apply it to 3 plus 4i times its conjugate, 3 minus 4i. What's going to happen is the middle term is going to cancel out. We're going to get a squared plus b squared. We're going to get a squared minus b squared times negative 1, or a squared plus b squared. And since in this case a is 3 and b is 4, we're going to get 3 squared plus 4 squared, or 25. One of the uses of this is in finding the quotient of a complex number. So for example, if we wanted to take 7 plus 6i and divide it by 5 minus 9i, in other words, find the quotient of those two complex numbers, we're going to need the conjugate of the denominator so that we can turn the denominator into a real number. And the conjugate of 5 minus 9i is a complex number that has the same real part but the opposite imaginary part. So the conjugate of 5 minus 9i is 5 plus 9i. Now, since this is an algebra, we've got to do the same thing to the top and the bottom. So if we're going to multiply this quotient of two complex numbers by something else, we better make it 1. So we're going to multiply it by the conjugate of the denominator, which now what we're going to have to do is multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators to get us the result. So when you distribute that out, you're going to get 7 times 5, or 35, plus 7 times 9i, which is 63i, plus 6i times 5, which is 30i, plus 6i times 9i, which is 54i squared. Of course, i squared is negative 1, so this, become, this term at the end becomes negative 54. The denominator, when we multiply a number by its conjugate, we get a squared plus b squared, which in this case is 5 squared plus 9 squared. When we combine the like terms, the real parts of 35 and negative 54, we get negative 19 in the numerator. When we combine the imaginary parts, we get 63 plus 30, 63i plus 30i, which is 93i, all divided by the denominator, which is 45. And you can write it this way, or you can also split off the real and imaginary parts and write it in this form, which is negative 19 over 45 plus 93 over 45i.
Now the modulus is the distance a point is on the complex plane from the origin. The complex plane is we put another real part on a horizontal axis and its imaginary part on a vertical axis. We're going to get to that later, not in this screencast. The modulus can be found by finding the complex number times its conjugate and then taking the square root of that. We already know that the number times its conjugate is a squared plus b squared, so we just take the square root of a squared plus b squared to find what's called the modulus. So if we look at our number 3 plus 4i that we looked at earlier and its conjugate 3 minus 4i, the modulus of that number, in other words the distance that number is from the origin if we put it on the complex plane, is going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is going to be the square root of 25 or 5. So the modulus of 3 plus 4i is equal to 5. And indeed, the modulus of 3 minus 4i is also 5 because we are squaring those numbers. Regardless of whether they're positive or negative, the distance remains the same. The distance on the complex plane, the modulus is 5. So we can find the conjugate of a complex number and use it to help us find the quotient of two complex numbers and the moduli or distance on the complex plane from the point in the origin.